from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. Earnings prints from the likes of Dell, Supermicro, and more recently HPE have shown that the AI server trend is not just benefiting cloud hyperscalers, but also firms with large on-premises install bases. You know, Oracle as well is trading at an all-time high, citing cloud momentum and recent deals with Google, OpenAI, and prior deals with Microsoft. But make no mistake, the momentum from the big three U.S. hyperscalers remains impressive, especially when considering the size of these firms. Combined, the IS and PaaS infrastructure revenue for AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform will approach $195 billion in 2024. Throw in Alibaba, and the market will exceed $200 billion for the first time, is growing above 20% annually. Notably, Supermicro is growing in the triple digits and has put itself directly into the AI mix. Hello and welcome to this week's The Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis and ahead of HPE Discover, we update you on the action in the on-prem and cloud infrastructure markets as the AI trade continues to benefit but broaden beyond the four silicon horsemen of NVIDIA, TSM, Broadcom, and Qualcomm. Let's start by looking at the market performance in this chart of the three bellwether on-premises server market leaders, Supermicro, Dell, and HPE. This is a one-year chart. You can see that on-prem is catching the AI wave. HPE, notably, was up 22% in the last 30 days. You can see you can see the, the one-year uh, growth in the stocks, HPE 29, almost 30%. Dell Technologies, 173%. Company has been rocking, but look at Supermicro, 250% in the last 12 months. And, and you can see it's down from its peak of this, uh, this past May. So the year-on-year -year server growth for these companies is actually quite remarkable and growing at rates we have not seen in years. HPE server growing at 18% last quarter, Dell 42%. That includes a little bit of networking, uh, but mostly servers, the AI server wave benefiting both HPE and Dell. And uh, Supermicro up 218% last quarter. That includes storage. Dell, of course, grew 42%, but the street was concerned. And you can see that drop, this precipitous drop in Dell stock, because while it grew 42%, its profits actually declined. So people are concerned that there is no money in AI servers because it's all going to go to NVIDIA. Uh, Dell addressed that on its call, you know, basically saying it's selling large deals to a lot of MSPs. And over time, as it starts to sell to enterprises, its margins will improve. But I think Dell is is getting gaining footprint, it's, you know, buying share because it sees big opportunities to provide additional products and services down the road. But the super micro growth is just remarkable. Liquid cooling is a hot topic and is being positioned um, as an enabler. HPE is positioning its liquid cooling prowess as a differentiator, both from a manufacturing standpoint and its direct liquid cooling capabilities with its Cray asset, got a strong case there. And then finally, sovereign data has really become a tailwind for a lot of these companies with on-prem capabilities. Governments want to keep their data with inside their borders, and they're installing big AI servers in order to do that. Now, HP's server momentum followed Dell's very high growth um, in AI servers. HPE had a very, very strong uh, quarter. And you can see that here in this slide in the ETR data for HPE. Let me take some time to describe this chart. This is from ETR, and it lays out the granularity of the proprietary net score methodology that we talk about all the time. And this is a percent of customers. So we've got several hundred HPE customers in the data set each quarter, the lime green represents the new logos, the new adoption of HPE's servers. So you can see it's actually quite small. HPE is serving its existing install base predominantly. 
the forest green, which is 33%, means 33% of those several hundred customers are spending more on HPE servers. And more means 6% plus. The gray is plus or minus 5%, and you can see that is the biggest category, 48%. The pinkish is spending less, and you can see that's declined um, a little bit in the past couple of quarters. That's spending 6% or, or less, or worse, I should say. And the, the bright red, that's it, putting HPE servers in containment or even churning off the platforms. And you can see that's down as well. That's a very positive trend. You subtract the reds from the greens, and you get net score. And that's that blue line that you can see popping up, showing some momentum for HP servers. Over on the right-hand side in the middle, you can see we've checked off Hewlett Packard Enterprise Server. The beauty of the ETR platform is you can check on different products and see how the performance looks, but we just isolated here on servers. That yellow line, by the way, is penetration or presence, pervasion, in the data set, it's a proxy for market penetration or market share. Uh, think of it as market share within the data set. Okay, so as strong as these trends are, it's worth comparing them with the hyperscalers for con context. So we're going to do that. This next chart is going to give you some idea as to what we mean. It lays out the most recent quarterly data for Dell, HPE, Supermicro, AWS, Azure, and GCP, and we're trying as much as possible here, and I'll talk about this in a moment, to have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with between AWS, Azure IS, and GCP IS, and we're assuming the vast majority of AWS is, is IS and PaaS. We're talking about IS and PaaS here. So let's start with um, the categories here. We're showing last quarter's year-on-year -year growth, we're showing roughly, these are approximations, by the way, just to give you a sense of the sort of business model. We're showing the next column, third column over is annual growth rate, sort of the, the mid to long-term projections, or, or actually more of short to midterm projections this year and maybe a little bit beyond. Uh, 2024 revenue projection, the valuation, the revenue multiple, and the operating profit. And you can get a sense looking at these metrics as to sort of the the how each firm stacks up. So Dell last quarter as a company grew 6%. Its annual growth rate that it's promising the street is somewhere in the low single, the low to mid single digits. It's got $95 billion revenue forecast and it's got a $95 billion valuation. Dell is finally trading at 1X revenue multiple. We said it wasn't that long ago, Dell was trading at 20, 25 cents in the dollar. And we said, we didn't feel like that was appropriate. We thought there were a number of levers that the company could pull and it has cleaning up its balance sheet and getting its product portfolio in line and 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 the like. And you can see its operating profit is at 9%. So it still remains a relatively low margin, but very high volume company. HPE, last quarter, the company grew 4% despite its eye-popping 40 plus percent server growth. It's only promising one to 3% on its growth rate for this year. Um, Part of that, I think, is conservatism. In fact, I think most of it is conservatism because their backlogs for AI servers are, are getting reduced um, to, I think they said, six to 12 weeks. So one would think that they would be able to accelerate um, the growth rates beyond that 1% to 3%. We'll see. They're roughly a $30 billion company. They're like Dell trading at about a 1x valuation. They're more profitable than Dell because they don't sell PCs. D Dell's Profits are, are are compressed by PC margins, which are you know high sing, high double digits, low low double digits. Sorry, high double digit, high teens, low low twenties at best. AWS, you can see, grew seventeen percent last quarter. Its its growth rate accelerated, so we are forecasting somewhere between fifteen and seventy percent annual growth for uh, AWS this year. They'll they'll probably surpass that one hundred and five billion, one hundred and five hundred and six billion. This is an implied valuation. You know, we picked a 10x multiple for AWS and Azure. So we've, we've reported many times that we feel like AWS, if it were a standalone company, would be a trillion dollar market cap company on its own. It's got a 5% operating profit. Frankly, I think 10x is probably conservative. 
Azure, IaaS, this is just the IaaS piece trying to do an apples to apples comparison with AWS, IaaS, and PaaS. So this is again, IaaS and PaaS grew 28% last quarter. That's what Microsoft reported for Azure. And we think it'll grow in that, you know, close to 30% range this year and bring in revenue of 60 billion, which is much lower than many of the consensus um, estimates are. I will explain why in a moment. Um, we're trying again to do an apples to apples comparison, but you take a 10X valuation there, you got a six, $700 billion valuation just for Azure. Um, and our guess would be they're probably trading, uh, uh, operating at a 20 to 30% range of operating profit, uh, probably less operating profit, you know, percentage as a percentage of revenue than AWS when you take out their, their productivity software. And then finally, GCP grew at the same rate as Azure, uh, 28%, and we think they can maintain that rate. Our revenue estimate for IaaS and PaaS for GCP is 20 billion, so significantly behind Microsoft and AWS. And uh, we, as a result, uh, assume a, a, a we, we would assume a, a lower implied valuation revenue multiple of 5x and likely uh, an operating profit of less than 10%. Well, that's sort of a snapshot, if you will, of, of, of a comparison of the, the on-prem leaders with some of the hyper, hyperscalers. And you can see the hyperscalers have a, you know, exceedingly attractive business model, notwithstanding uh, Supermicro's just incredible 200% growth rate uh, and, and going forward 30% plus uh, and, and um, a 15 billion, that's a typo on the charts, really did 15 billion this, this uh, we'll correct that in the final slides, 15 billion this year and a $43 billion valuation for a 3X revenue multiple. Skipped over super micro, sorry for that. Um, okay, moving on to the next slide. Let's take a look at the big four hyperscalers. We'll focus really on AWS, Azure, and GCP, but we throw in Alibaba just to round about. This is the 23 and 24 estimates for hyperscale IS and pass revenue for those four companies. You can see the calendar year revenue. We had AWS at 91 billion, Azure at 52 billion, GCP almost 16 billion, and Alibaba at 12.4 billion for a total of 170 billion dollar market growing at 17 to 18%. And we see that rate accelerating because of the AI trade this year, AI trend this year. We've got calendar year 24 revenue for AWS exceeding 106 billion. Previous chart I know said 105 billion, but you know these these estimates, these are, these are estimates and sometimes they're in flux. Um, Azure, we've got a 68 billion. As I said, that's lower than what many people believe. We'll come back to that GCP almost 20 billion. Alibaba, 13 billion. The market for those four will exceed 200 billion this year, growing at 21 to 22%. And you can see what that means for the revenue shares. AWS, we believe, will maintain, by our definitions, an over 50% market share. We don't see, as we define IaaS and PaaS, we don't see Azure and AWS crossing over, like many people have predicted, uh, because of the reasons that we'll talk about in some depth on the right-hand side here. Our Microsoft figures map to the leaked court documents uh, that were uh, released um, inadvertently as part of the Activision uh, lawsuit that was brought against Microsoft. Um, and again, our attempt is intended to represent IS and PaaS revenue only. Okay, so we're not including um, a lot of the up the stack revenue uh, that 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 uh, we believe other analysts might be including so it, it it really is a a a range that we track we we keep two models one is what we call the apples to apples model the other one is a a best case all in azure uh, is and pas revenue if you look at that that's the third point here in this chart the delta is quite Remarkable. So we've got Azure at 68 billion from our apples to apples model, but the all in model, the one that most people, I think, just accept Microsoft's numbers would be upwards of 90 
billion, $91 billion for 2024. Okay, keep in mind, we do constant currency. Um, and, and again, trying to map to uh, the true IAS and past numbers. And what we're going to show you next here on this next slide is how we did that or, or one of the pivot points that we used to do that. You can see here, this is a screenshot of one of the internal documents uh, that was uh, submitted to the court. And it was redacted. That's that black on the side, that black box. And you can see the infrastructure. See Microsoft Cloud comprising infrastructure, data and AI, digital and app innovation, modern work, et cetera, security, business apps. But look at infrastructure, 34 billion. So when it came out, this, this report, Microsoft's fiscal year 22 comprises the four quarters starting in calendar year Q3 2021. So take calendar year Q3 2021, Q4 2021, and then Q1 and 2 of 2022, add those up. And according to this internal document, it should be 34 billion. And we feel that is a more apples to apples comparison with AWS. Now, conventional estimates would have Azure at that time at around 47 billion versus the 34 billion shown here. And so the reported Azure quarterly growth rates since this time period have ranged from 27 to 38%, typically in the 28% range. And so that delta, that makes a delta of more than when you just do the math, it makes a delta of more than $20 billion over the past two years between the apples to apples comparison and then the Azure all in. So as I say, we keep two models and we look at this over a range and we continue to try to peel the onion to better understand this. But let me give you some more context on this next slide. This is what it looks like from going back to 2022 2023 and 2024, the IS and PAS revenue. So we've got AWS. These are the reported AWS numbers. And granted, there's probably some things in there that aren't pure IS and PAS, and that'll become more confusing over, over time as they add things like Q and they go up the stack. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor that. But the vast majority of AWS's revenue is IS and PAS. We're talking compute, storage, networking, and platform as a service and other associated services around that. Azure, of course, we think includes a lot of hybrid, a lot of on-prem. It probably spills into some of the productivity apps. Um, maybe not, but but certainly security could be in some of those numbers. Um, and, and PaaS, which is, I think, perfectly acceptable. Some of the SQL Server data might get in there. So it's very unclear. You know, when you pick apart the financials and the 10Ks, uh, you can find definitions, but it's still pretty fuzzy. So at any rate, you can see AWS at 80, 90, and 106 billion for uh, those three years. Then we've got the Azure best case and the Azure worst case. So Azure best case is all in Azure. Azure worst case is the apples to apples attempt relative to AWS. And if you look down the bottom part of this chart, you can see Azure as a percent of AWS you know, the best case going from 69% to 86%, whereas the Azure worst case, 51% to about two thirds of AWS's revenue, as we said earlier, we don't see a crossover point on the worst case, which we think is the more likely case of pure infrastructure anytime soon. Okay, a couple more slides that we wanna share with you. This next one speaks to some ETR data and it just positions uh, several companies in the cloud computing sector. Now we've, we've redacted uh, the data in the upper right and um, the N in the survey because the uh, July survey has actually been in the field and it's only partially uh, complete. So we're going back to April. But I'll give you some clues as to what's coming in the current survey that's in the field now. So the vertical axis here is net score. Net score is a measure of spending momentum. It's the granularity that we showed you before. It's a measure of the net percent of customers that are spending more in a platform, netting out those that are spending less. Again, back to that previous chart, subtract the reds from the greens, that's net score. That's the vertical axis. 
bear in mind anything above 40% is exceedingly high. The, the horizontal axis is penetration or overlap within the data set. And so it's a measure, it's a proxy for market penetration. You could even say market share, even though it's not directly comparable. The amazing thing on this chart is, and remember, this is percent of customers. This does not indicate spending. And that's why even though AWS is larger from a revenue standpoint, from a customer penetration standpoint, Microsoft is ubiquitous. That's why it's in the upper right ahead of AWS. But what's remarkable here is both AWS and Microsoft, enormous companies have spending momentum, net scores above 40%. Only Cloudflare is up above that line and the ones we've shown. Uh, Google Cloud Platform is close, but as you can see, it's a distant third behind those two. A couple other points. Give you a clue as to this quarter, this coming, this coming survey. HPE is, is making a massive move and that's reflected in its earnings prints. You can see the momentum in this dotted blue line. HPE in the recent survey, got a glimpse of it, jumps from negative zone up into the positive zone, right there with Dell. Dell made a, a, a similar move previously. Uh, you can see IBM Cloud kind of, you know, pretty much at the zero line. The other really interesting trend here is what's happening with VMware Cloud on AWS and VMware Cloud, subsequent to the Broadcom acquisition. There's this clear downward pressure on the vertical axis, and it's very consistent with what we've said and what we've predicted for Broadcom, what Broadcom's gonna do is they're gonna narrow the customer base. Okay, that's why they get penalized in this chart because they're essentially focusing the company on the largest customers and the biggest spenders. We've all heard the stories of the price increases that Broadcom is, is pushing. Broadcom's strategy is to get people to buy the bundle instead of buying the piece parts you're gonna, we're gonna raise prices and you're gonna, we're gonna invest and you're gonna buy the whole thing and we're gonna continue to invest and we're gonna try to keep you on that platform. And you look at Broadcom's most recent results, um, it's playing out exactly the way that we said it was when we uh, first wrote that piece a couple of years ago that Broadcom will tame the VMware beast. So this is consistent with what we're seeing. Um, Oracle as well plays pretty prominently. We hear a lot of positive things from Oracle on its cloud, but that's how the market, you know, generally shapes up in the ETR data. All right, so let's wrap with some scenarios for the remainder of 2024 and, and look beyond. HPE, Dell, and Supermicro have very strong visibility on AI server growth and server demand. Um, also improve storage demand. You're going to see that from, I think, all three companies. Uh, the ETR data supports, you know, better momentum in storage. Right now, pure storage has been benefiting and has been a, a share taker. Uh, Dell and HPE have been donating share and uh, they've got some product cycles kicking in. So we think the storage market is going to provide some additional boost, which is a good thing for these companies because storage has a sig significantly higher gross margin. Storage gross margins are in the high 50s, low 60s, sometimes even mid 60s. If you're pure storage, they're even higher than that. Um, and so that gross margin will translate and drop into the P&L in a very, very positive way and to, to the bottom line. Um, and so we're, we're seeing this demand come from large customers, come from governments, come from CSPs, from MSPs, it's across the board, and the supply of GPUs is loosening somewhat. Um, network backlogs at Cisco, which we're not talked about here, but Cisco and HPE, Aruba are, are improving. So all that bodes well for the on-prem cloud, the hybrid cloud folks. Uh, next point here is Gen AI is really starting to deliver some meaningful incremental revenue. Uh, we're seeing it in the cloud numbers. Uh, I think it was 7% of uh, uh, Microsoft's Azure revenue this year was the tailwind, up from 6% last quarter. Uh, very clearly, the accelerated growth rate um, for AWS last quarter, or I say very clearly, but we believe it's in a large part due to uh, the, the AI momentum and, and very clearly Google, based on the data, is, is gaining ground on uh, AWS in 
in AI. We're going to dig into that a little further. It's a little, the, the data is showing that, but, but then again, we don't have direct bedrock data. And Anthropic is rocking, as is Llama. A lot of that could be going through bedrock. So I want to be careful about drawing too many conclusions there. But, but very clearly, Google, as, a, as an AI name, is picking up steam. You know, AI ROI, we think, remains a critical factor in our predictions post this year. We said that either AI ROI has to deliver or the macro spending climate is going to continue to be tricky. So we're assuming a strong Q4 for AI, where we're going to start to see ROI, and we can think that momentum is going to build into 2025, and that bodes well for infrastructure. Risks to that scenario, if AI doesn't deliver on the ROI, there could be an AI backlash. You know, GPU supply is always a concern, but it looks like Blackwell may be ahead of the game, given the little tricks they played with uh, reducing the floating point from eight to four and uh, keeping the same process at TSM. So getting to market, you know, maybe even sooner than a lot of people thought. But we're still taking a look at the macro headwinds. But zooming out a little bit, Alex, coming back to me, um, you know, this notion of hybrid cloud, we hear a lot of narrative in the industry that, oh, you people, all you analysts said that cloud was going to take over the world. First of all, nobody ever said that. You know, maybe maybe Amazon did, Jassy, in the fullness of time, his comments there. But, you know, none of the analysts ever really you know, said that. Um, hybrid cloud's always been a thing, and we've always seen that. But if you look at hybrid cloud and you look at, generally speaking, the growth rates for on-prem, uh, they're getting significantly outpaced by cloud computing. HPE and its, and its recent earnings print, they they have a hybrid cloud category that they they created uh, for this fiscal year. Um, you can see the definition in their 10K, so it includes a bunch of stuff that maybe you wouldn't consider a hybrid cloud, but hey, that's what they call it. The point being their hybrid cloud business declined, you know, high single digits in this past quarter. So the point we're making here is we're not calling for a repatriation by any means. What we are calling for is a tailwind that is benefiting unquestionably the cloud players who have the tools, they have the LLM optionality, and in many cases, they have the LLMs, certainly in the case of Google and Microsoft with the OpenAI relationship. And we know Amazon is hard at work. Not only do they have the relationships with Anthropic and the investment in Anthropic and, and relationships with several other LLM players, uh, they're also working on something codenamed Olympus. We'll see if we see that announced prior to or at reInvent this year. And the sovereign cloud, uh, 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 the sovereign uh, 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 cloud trade or sovereign cloud demand, i.e. we want to keep our data within our borders, is really benefiting uh, the uh, traditional legacy on-prem players. That combined with a lot of the large companies want to put servers in their own data centers and, and, and really learn how they can take advantage of AI drive ROI, they're being very cautious with the barriers uh, to growth or to adoption, which continue to be things like legal concerns and other governance concerns that we've reported on um, for many, many weeks and quarters. Okay, we're going to be at HPE Discover next week. Myself, Rebecca Knight, John Furrier, uh, Rob Strecce, Bob La Liberté. We got a great crew from the Cube and the Cube Research. So check us out in thecube.net and check out all the action on siliconangle.com and thecuberesearch.com. Okay, that's it for now. I want to thank Alex Meyerson and Ken Schiffman who are on production and Alex runs our podcast and Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and in our newsletters and Rob Hoth is our EIC for at siliconangle.com. Thank you all. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts. All you can do is search Breaking Analysis Podcast Wherever you listen, just like us, share it. Really appreciate the comments on our LinkedIn post. I publish each week at theqresearch.com and siliconangle.com. You can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com or DM me at dvellante. Check out etr.ai. They get the best survey data in the enterprise tech business. 
This is Dave Vellante for the Cube Insights, Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Breaking Analysis.